the whole situation around Equifax and and this hack and all this kind of stuff raises some really, really big issues. And the main one is the increasing uh, tendency on the part of Tennessee business model of large corporations to turn you and me into the product and then in many cases sell it to us, you know, sell, sell ourselves to back to us, as it were. And, uh, you know, I mean, we're, we, you see this increasingly if you go on, uh, you know, if you, if you uh, search, if you go on a search engine and you look for something and then suddenly you start seeing ads for that, or even if you get an email about something and you start seeing ads for it if you're using, you know, one of the email services from one of the companies that has a search engine. Um, I mean, this is not limited to Google. This is, this is happening with, with uh, some of the other ones as well. Um, but, the, but the credit thing is a particularly interesting one. I remember back in the 1970s, I started a, uh, Terry O'Connor, my business partner, and I started a company, uh, the, the, the Woodley Herber Company, and then we had an ad agency called Terry Graphics. This was in 72. And <clears throat> we wanted to be able to uh, buy equipment. We, we ultimately had a, it was an herbal tea company, and we ultimately had 18 employees in a little factory in Okemos, Michigan, in the old. Uh, R.E. Oles Mansion, which at that point was just kind of a falling down giant old house, but it worked fine for us. And in order to buy equipment, uh, you know, le leasing it, that sort of thing, you had to have good credit. And the way that you had good credit back in the 70s, keep in mind, again, this was before the Reagan era of, you know, massive deregulation of banking and things. Um, pretty much everything was done through Dun & Bradstreet, D&B. And so you call up a company and say, hey, I'd like to get a copy machine or, you know, we need a, we need a mixing uh, uh, contraption, you know, the, you know for, the, for the herbs or whatever. And uh, so, you know, we'd like to, you know, lease a $5,000 piece of equipment or whatever. And they would say, well, what's your DNB number? And you'd say, oh, it's 23-149722 or whatever. And they would immediately look it up because you gave them your number. And now that they have your number and, and they have your permission, they would contact Donna Bradstreet and say, you know, what's this guy's credit history or what's the company's credit history? And these were, you know, essentially sole proprietorships and partnerships. So it was our personal stuff as well as our business stuff. And, and DNB would give you a rating and, and they would convey that rating to people. And that seems like the way it should be, right? Uh, you know, in fact, for us to get that DNB number, we had to be in business over, uh, as I recall, a year. Maybe it was two years, and we had to do a certain level of business. And I mean, it was—you had to. I had to. I, I went through this myself personally. This is um, this is a personal personal experience. Had to contact on a Bradstreet, say we would like to have you rate our credit. We would like to be rated by Don and Bradstreet. Um, I don't recall if we paid a fee for it or not. I, my recollection vaguely is that there was a, an application fee to be rated by Dun & Bradstreet. Um, you know, I'm not sure exactly where the money flowed on that. I think also when companies asked them for my credit information, once I gave them my, my number, they would also have to pay DNB. So, you know, there was a way to make money here. But what has happened now with Experian and Equifax and, and uh, uh, Trans, whatever it is, the, the, third, uh, the third company, uh, Trans America, I think, um, with these big, these three giant uh, rating companies, credit rating companies, is they have just reached out to all of the, you know, the financial agencies, the credit card companies, the banks, and everybody else, the mortgage companies, and gotten all our information. Without our saying, please do it, without our asking for it, without our giving them permission to do it, they have acquired all this information, and not all of it is publicly available. This isn't like, you know, compiling voter records where that information is publicly available. Um, you know, you have to, if somebody wants to know, you know, my activity with my bank or with my, you know, whatever it may be, my mortgage or whatever, um, you know, they have to contact the, my banker and, and get that information. And I've never had a credit card, uh, you know, a credit reporting company contact me, call me, email me or anything and say, you know, may we have your permission to, uh, to know, you know, what's in your checking account or what your credit card uh, line of credit is or whatever. You know, it's, it, they, don't, they don't ask you for that permission. 
They simply go out and get your information, and then they sell your information. And it's a big business. And we are the product. And we never consented to this. And, and if you don't want them to pass your information out to people, or actually sell your information to people, if you don't want them to, you have to do what's called a credit freeze, and you have to pay them to freeze your credit. And, and, and then it's only good for, you know, how, it depends on how long you pay for, but typically at the most one year. You know, you can't call up one of these companies and say, you know, I just like to go off the grid. You know, I don't, I, I, I'm at a point in my life where, you know, I'm not using credit or I, what I'm using right now is just fine. My mortgage is there. My credit cards are there. Everything is solid. Just erase me from your records. You can't do that. And why the heck not? So I think that there's a, a really strong case to be made for us to re-examine the entire business model of American citizens being the product that is being sold. Whether it is Facebook looking at all of every like you've ever liked and concluding that uh, you know, you, you have a, a, uh, a preference for, for uh, vegetarian food and uh, you like, uh, you know, pictures of rainbows and you tend to, to follow Democratic politicians. And, I mean, they, they've got this down to they can literally say, you know, people who are more likely to be depressed, people who are more likely to... You know, the, the latest scandal with Facebook was... Was uh, you know somebody said, "Hey, I want to I want to place an ad that goes to people who hate Jews," and they were like, "Sure, here's here's a list. <laughs> Give us the money, we'll put the ad there." Say what? Hate Jews? Really? This is the, I mean this actually happened just last week. So you've got you know Facebook is selling us, Google is selling us, Microsoft you know the Bing search engines they're selling us. The big three credit agencies and a bunch of smaller ones are selling us. You can bet your bottom dollar that your bank is selling you. Uh, if you have credit cards with, with uh, you know, gas companies, uh, gasoline companies, or with uh, department stores, things like that, they're selling your information. We have become the product. And, you know, I realize that the Fourth Amendment, you know, which guarantees our right to privacy, our, you know, of, uh, you know in our person's papers and effects uh, and, and residence. Um, I, I, I realize that the Fourth Amendment is a protection of a right to privacy being, you know, to prevent that right to privacy from being violated by the government. The Fourth Amendment does not give you the right not to have your privacy violated. It, do, it does not say that you can be protected from privacy violations by private corporations, only by government. But law can be made and has been made in the past and unmade and made and unmade that does provide you with privacy protections. And I think this, this whole Experian um, uh, hack and now, you know, the criminal investigation into it and everything and the whole, the whole media thing about it is, you know, how's it going to affect the company or was there an executive who behaved criminally? Nobody's even asking the question. Is this whole business model idea of selling us, you and me, we are the product that are being sold to everybody from, from you know, politicians to, to soap manufacturers, it, shouldn't there be some regulation of that?